The 2020 presidential race may be intensifying across the country, but politics in Maine are also heating up as Democrats fight to unseat Republican Senator Susan Collins. The GOP lawmaker is at the center of the impeachment witness battle unfolding on Capitol Hill today, but back in Maine, Democratic candidates are vying for her seat. The state's House Speaker, Sarah Gideon, has already gotten a few key endorsements, including from Planned Parenthood. She is facing tough competition from attorney Bray Kidman, former Google executive Ross Lajeunesse, activist Betsy Sweet, and travel agent Michael Bunker. And joining us now from Portland, Maine, is one of those candidates, Betsy Sweet. Good to see you. Nice to see you, Vlad. Thanks for having me. So uh, your policies are considered progressive. Uh, you support Medicare for All, you support the Green New Deal, and you support a ban on assault weapons, just to name a few. But what separates you from some of the other candidates, especially as Sarah Gideon gains some ground and continues to raise a lot of money? Well, I have more legislative experience than any of the candidates in this race. I have been advocating for Maine people for the last 37 years to make sure that the voices of people who aren't usually heard in politics are represented and the things that we need in our everyday lives actually happen. I have put together winning coalitions to do things that people have considered impossible and made them possible, and that is exactly what we need in Washington right now, and that is the message that we have in this campaign and what's gaining momentum every single day on the ground here in Maine. So when we look at the general election in November against Susan, Senator Susan Collins, um, Maine, Maine is going to be faced with a really tough choice. She's been uh, in the Senate for quite some time, uh, but she is facing this very tough re-election battle. And I wonder how people in Maine are viewing her recent, uh, her recent votes that have been pivotal in the history of this country, including uh, during the Supreme Court nomination process and now during the impeachment of the president. Yeah, I think people in Maine are getting really um, tired of the sort of wink, wink, nod, nod that Senator Collins is doing. You know, she votes with Mitch McConnell every time he needs her. That includes the vote on Kavanaugh, the vote on the biggest tax break for millionaires and corporations this country has ever seen. But when she's, when she's really needed for the Maine people, she votes with Mitch McConnell rather than with Maine people. So, you know, she, plays it, she, she tries to play it both ways, but I think Mainers are becoming much more aware of exactly what's happening. And so why should then people uh, look to you uh, in making a decision come 2020 over Senator Collins? Well, I think we're in the fight of our lives. I think if we look at what's happening to this planet in terms of our environment and the climate crisis, if we look what's happening to millions and millions of Americans, including thousands of people in Maine who don't have health care, if we look at the income inequality that's happening, we are really in the fight of our lives and it's putting our very democracy at peril. So doing the same thing over and over again and using the same playbook that has gotten us here or believing that we can put a Band-Aid on this is not going to work. It's not working in people's lives in Maine. And so we need a, a senator in Washington who is actually going to be bold, be a leader, is going to pull the curtain back on the truth, and is actually going to go represent Maine people and not just big investors, big donors, and what their party leadership wants. Um, and as you know, uh, so Democrat Jared Golden, he managed to flip the second congressional seat in 2018 from red to blue, running primarily on a platform of expanding Medicaid to Mainers and working towards Medicare for all. Do you think that this, yes. this is the right approach to health care? 100 percent. Medicare for all, I think, is the only answer that we have towards our health care crisis. Anything else is not sustainable and is unaffordable and leaves millions of Americans and thousands and thousands of Mainers without coverage. And so I think that, you know, we can't just keep saying, oh, let's put a Band-Aid on it, let's tweak it here and there. It doesn't work. And so I get to meet people on the campaign trail like I have, a woman who was diagnosed with cancer who's refusing her cancer treatment because she refuses to spend her days, no matter how many they are, fighting with insurance companies. So she's refusing all treatment so that she can live in peace and not fighting with insurance companies. That's just not, not just about Medicare for all. That's about who we are. We are the only industrialized nation in the world who has not figured this out. We can't sustain this, and we have to take bold action on this and call for what's right. So I guess the next question, the next natural question is, how do you get to a Medicare for all plan? Uh, would you support uh, or would you vote uh, to raise taxes on the middle class? Well, I think that's a false choice. I think that 
if we look at how much Medicare for All costs, even the most conservative think tanks who hate Medicare for All say that Medicare for All is going to cost about $4 trillion less than our current health care system. We have the most expensive health care system in the world with some of the worst outcomes. So if the first thing we do is take the profits out, about 30% of the dollars that go right into some CEO's pocket, and that's already going to bring the cost down. And then if we look at what we are spending as individuals and as a country in terms of our premiums, our deductibles, our co-pays, we would spend much less than we do now. We would just write the check to a different entity. And I think that's the choice that we're facing. What we can afford is to continue to have rising premiums, rising deductibles, doctors out of network, and or going without care at all. That's what we can not afford. So try to, in convincing folks in Maine that the Medicare for All plan is the way to go, I think what you will often hear from voters, and not just in Maine but across the country, is they're worried about a couple of things. They're worried about not having choice when it comes to choosing their medical professionals, and they're worrying about paying even more than they already pay. So how do you convince those mm -hmm. individuals? What would you say to those two questions? Yeah, well, I think the choice one is actually the opposite. Right now, if you have a private health insurance plan, you have doctors or providers who are in network and out of network, and that changes on a regular basis. So under Medicare for All, all providers are covered. So that's one issue. And then um, the second question of worrying about losing what they have, everyone, you're not gonna lose your doctor and you're not gonna lose your coverage. What you're going to lose is your premium payment, your deductibles, your copay, and your inability to access health care when you need it. I, I met a mother the other day whose son walked around on a broken leg for three days because she didn't want to take him to the emergency room because she didn't want to pay the emergency room copay, and she thought maybe it would just get better. Hmm. That's not working. All right, uh, Betsy Sweet, thank you so much for joining us. We wish you well. We wish you luck. Thank you so much. Go to BetsySweet.com, and we look forward to this incredible race. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. So Betsy. important. Appreciate it. Alrighty. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.